Let's take a look at the Aldi Work Zone Rechargeable LED Work Light. This is really bright. Uh, when you use it, the first button setting, it lights up full intensity. Second button setting, low intensity, no sign. Well, it's not that low, uh, but no sign of strobing or flickering at all. You're going to see a bit of flickering because of the scan of the camera, but there's no visible flickering off this at all. I wonder if it's using resistors to switch the uh, the light. I've tried to press the button in various uh, combinations. Holding it down, it doesn't have fancy SOS modes. It's simply high, medium, off. Or high, low, off, if you want. To recharge it, you pop this little cover open. It has an O-ring round outside to keep the water out. It has a micro USB charge port. An output for 5 volts up to 1 amp. Not tested that. A little button for looking at the battery uh, status. When you charge it, these also flash and build up. But uh, the last one, even when the charge currents drop to about zero, it just stays flashing forever. It's not a really good indication of when it has finished charging. The front has, the LED itself has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's got 13, uh, 30 chips, should I say in it, uh, probably the standard flip chips under the phosphor. Let's open it up. It claims to be 10 watts. I haven't tested that. I suppose once got it open, I could test that. So let's take these screws out and see what it reveals. It has, incidentally, got the little usual clicky handle thing. It's pretty handy. It's pretty bright. It lasts a long time. Uh, the battery capacity is 4,400 milliamp power, which makes me think if it's using 18650s, it will be two of the standard 2,200 milliamp power ones. It's using a dual pack of the 18650s. I was hoping this would have uh, connectors on it, but it doesn't. Right, tell you what. Um, I shall pop the wires off, take the circuit board out, and we'll take a look at it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete, and the unit has been put back together. It's not a bad little light. The circuitry is okay, though it does have quirks. If I sound a bit different, maybe a little bit hoarse, it's because I've just finished a two-hour Patreon live stream, and it just tends to leave my voice just a little bit coarser, because I a lot of talking during those streams. It was quite a good one, quite enjoyable. Let's take a look on the uh, through-hole component side first. We have the micro USB charging port, which is mounted on its own little extension circuit board to bring it up to the front of the unit so it can poke out at the same sort of height as the uh, output connector. We have the output connector for the USB power bank functionality, which can put out 5 volts at 1 amp, and it has its two data pins tied together. Um, we've got a button here for the power bank functionality, just to basically show the power level when the main light isn't on. We have an electrolytic capacitor and we have the main button for the uh, the actual light itself, which is just a click on click. Well, it's not a click on. It's a it's a simple click button, tactile button, but with a rubber uh, cover in front. I think it's just they've used a bigger one just for extra strength. If we take a look at the circuit board underneath now, I could move this to the middle. It would actually be clear in the middle, wouldn't it? It would be better in the middle. It would have been better in the middle in the first place, but not to worry, I've done it. Uh, here is the other side of the circuit board, and it's quite busy. It is based on the charging and discharging of the lithium cell via a power bank IC. It's an SP4533. What also took me a while was the initially the data sheet I brought up for, up for the SP4533 was a buck regulator. And I was thinking, that's not right, because it's having to boost the voltage up to uh, run the 5 volt port here. And it turns out there were two chips of the same number, which does not help. So there's this little uh, boost inductor. Uh, the usual thing, it's got uh, some filter capacitors all around it, and it's basically putting the 5 volts over to there. Plus, it's also sending signals to a universal microcontroller, which is controlling the light itself. The microcontroller controlling the light actually controls the, the uh, state of charge indicators, and uh, when you push the button, it's not signaling to this. Uh, it gets two signals, one to show when it is be, uh, being powered from the little USB connector. You can see the back of that little satellite circuit board just sticking through here where it's been soldered. And it signals to it that it's plugged into USB and therefore charging. And then there is uh, another LED 
LED output on this, which simply shows, well, it's got two LED outputs, charging and discharging. It's like the typical little ones you'd find like this. It's this sort of uh, power bank chip that just has the red LED and the blue LED. Very simple the way I've done it. But the actual voltage monitoring is being done by this, and all that uh, chip is indicating to it is that something is plugged in here and then it kicks up as if, you know, it's detecting it, discharging, and it shows the state of the batteries. The LEDs are driven by a dual MOSFET package, but all the both MOSFETs are basically hooked in parallel, and they've just got one resistor sort of feeding both the uh, gates of those. And they then power the LEDs via two resistor positions which just have zero ohm links. Okay, let's take a look at the circuit schematic. The schematic. So the first bit we'll start with here will be the power bank circuitry. So the USB supply comes in and before it hits the chip, there's two things happen. There's a resistive divider which sends the charge signal over to the microcontroller which is on the next page. That just tells it that the USB power supply is plugged in and the unit then knows that, you know, it will be charging, it lights the LEDs. There's also a little filter, a 1.5 ohm resistor and a capacitor just to basically remove any noise from uh, noisy outputs, which would power supplies just to provide greater stability for this chip. The chip has the negative connection. It's interesting to know it's an 8-pin chip, but it's got 9 connections. The negative connection is actually on the back. If you were to look at the back of the chip, there's a pad in the back, and that's not just for heat sinking purposes. That actually uh, is the negative connection as well. We also have a V-cell connection connected to negative. V-cell is the voltage select. If it's tied to negative, the unit will stop charging at 4.2 volts. If it's just left floating, it goes up to 4.35 volts. You'd think they'd do it the other way around, uh, so that, you know, just as a precaution, just because, well, if that pin desoldered, it would try and overcharge the cell. The unit then charges the battery via this connection, and the battery has a little capacitor across it for stability um, of the actual, like, monitoring the voltage across it. And it also has a coil coming from the battery in to be switched to the zero volt rail by a, a internal MOSFET or other transistor, and that is used to then boost the voltage up so that uh, it puts the output to these two smoothing capacitors and the USB output here, which uh, again, the, the data pins are just linked across in that USB output. At the same time, uh, when it's discharging, when you've got a load on this, it does activate what is designed to drive an LED, it goes positive with respect to the zero volt rail. And this instance, it's going out to the discharge connection, the microcontroller, and then it's got a 10K pull down resistor. So all that t tells the microcontroller is that the uh, unit is running and uh, it basically brings up the LEDs. Let's take a look at the, uh, at that point, I should say, 4.2 volts and zero volts goes out to the rest of the circuitry. Anything else to cover here? No, that's it. It was quite a tricky circuit board to reverse engineer, I have to say. It just it seemed quite complex, and it was the position of the components was just made it tricky for some reason. Don't know why. There are two capacitors and then put an uh, electrolytic, the little one that was on the other side of the board, and then a decoupling capacitor local to that. Then there's further decoupling of the supply to the mystery microcontroller via a shot key diode and a capacitor. Uh, I guess that means that ultimately, even if this is a very noisy rail, you'll always get a fairly constant voltage. It won't, st if it, the LEDs pull the current, the voltage down low when it's, say, pulsive modulating, which it does, uh, then it's going to uh, ma make sure that uh, whatever peak voltage is there will charge that capacitor up, but not let that flow back through the shot case. So this gets a stable supply voltage, which is odd because it monitors the battery voltage via this network here, which is a 1K resistor, and then a 750K, which is a very odd value, high value, across a capacitor. I guess that's just to ensure that capacitor does just charge down and react quite quickly to the battery. Not sure. But what's odd is that the voltage going in on this V-Sense pin is always going to be about 0.2 volts higher than the positive supply pin because of that shot key diode. That's strange. There are two inputs from the previous circuit. 
one showing that it's plugged into the USB charger with that simple divider, and then the other one from the power bank chip, which is just telling it that it's discharging. It's the LED driver that's actually just driving an input to this, so it can power these LEDs. It powers the LEDs just via a resistor power LED, um, and it's got the two buttons, one to basically show the current power status and one to actually toggle through the modes in the LEDs. The LEDs are switched by the dual MOSFET. I've just drawn one here. And it's a classic uh, arrangement on the gate. It's got a 10K pull-down resistor to make sure that uh, whatever happens to this, it's always stably pulled off and it's not going to sort of go into an intermediate state or power up if this thing is uh, unstable anyway. But when it wants to turn the LEDs on, it takes this positive via this 1K resistor and turns the MOSFET on. The two 0 ohm resistors are... I guess just placeholders for adjusting the power output. I think this circuit board is actually designed for different lights. I think it has maybe even in the past, the reason for the dual MOSFET, they may actually possibly have had the functionality that had to, it, in another product, it might have two sets of LEDs. In this case, it's got one large cob with 30 LEDs in parallel. It's got those two zero ohm links. At four volts, I measured the current at 2.3 amps uh, at the high mode. And at the low mode, it was one amp. And that is more or less it. There's not really much else to say about this. Damn, it's so easy to describe it now. But, you know, like reverse engineering it uh, takes so much longer. Um, there are the uh, LEDs here. And there are their little resistors. There's the little clicky button that makes those light up. And there's the, the big button across here that uh, is used to uh, activate the light. There's the dual MOSFET with its uh, pull-down resistor and its little uh, turn-on resistor. Uh, short key diode to the power supply for that chip. And a little local decoupling capacitor. And there's a little voltage sensing network here. Everything else kind of belongs to uh, this chip, which uh, has its little filter there. Uh, local decoupling capacitors. And then uh, it's got a couple of resistors here to... Uh, regulate the voltage uh, to the input pins for the charge and discharge. And that is it. It's a, quite a nice little light. It's chunky. It's robust. It stands up well. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh, hold on. I'm just going to bring a focus here. Just to bring the focus to a more sensible level. Here is a box. It is focused to a more sensible level. But this uh, stand is actually pretty good. The light feels robust. It's got these rubbery bits that on all the corners. It's designed to be dropped and bumped about. The battery pack inside is little plastic fins that space it away to stop the lithium batteries coming in contact with the hot heat sink in the back of this. Not sure how hot it will get. Well, technically speaking, 2.3 amps, about 3 volts. It's going to get about 6 watts hot. I think uh, at full 4.2 volt charge, it could be the best part of 10 watts, but I don't think it actually is fully 10 watts. Uh, but the stand here, it can stand as it is vertically uh, with the thing folded closed. But as you click this out, it does go to quite a range of angles. It's quite smart. It can also be stood up like that for more accurate aiming. It's a neat little light and it is bright. Look at that. It's really, you know... And there's no flicker. The pulse of the modulation must happen at high enough frequency that I certainly, even with a, a pen, swipey a pen front of it, you're going to see flicker in the camera probably because of the uh, frame, frame rate. But I'm not seeing any flicker uh, on this at all. And usually swiping something fast like that would show that. So it's quite smart. Uh, the batteries are a decent capacity. And uh, it's just all together, it seems quite nicely designed. So there we go. The work zone rechargeable LED work light from Aldi's. It's really quite nice. I like this light. It's quite a smart one.